this is a, a substantial risk that you are facing by not adhering to the well, lockdown guidelines we'll and based on what trading standards have advised you already. We'll have to well, look into that. Really if you want to look into that, is, I guess I can only go on what I've been told myself. Giving, no, excuse me, you're not even giving us time to sort out what our rights are here. This is a, no, wait a minute, this is a business of 30 years here. And I'm not disputing we, that. We, we, we don't feel that you are, that the law is, is right in this respect, that we are not doing anyone any harm by being open. We are doing no harm. What, what proof you, is there that you, you we've harmed anyone? I'm here in Droitwich where uh, I'm visiting a family who run a business who have been persecuted by the local police. They've received warnings, they've received orders to shut down and they've received fines. And just around the corner there's a WH Smith doing the exact same services that they offer but they're not being targeted. It's just the small local family businesses. What I've been told, if you keep failing to abide by the trading standards then that you need to be closed, there is a risk that you pay but by I, yourself. I don't get that how... if you continue to fail to obey by the regulations, well, we'll shut down completely. That there is a risk that you can be given away, or you can have your license taken away from you, and you can be shut. This is a, a substantial risk that you are facing. If you or someone you know has been unfairly fined, ticketed, or even arrested, head over to fightthefines.co.uk and fill out a form with the details of your case. We will crowdfund a civil liberties lawyer to fight the fine in court, just like we will for this shop here in Droitwich. On the first day of this second lockdown, um, we'd already decided before that uh, that we would be opening. Um, so we opened up on the first day and within an hour and a half, um, the police came and uh, physically shut the shop, mm. um, actually closed the doors. Well, um, they stood in the door and stopped people coming in, basically. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah. Yeah. so you yeah, were quite, still open? We were open. Yeah. We had one yeah. officer right. talking to us, the other one standing in the doorway. This isn't for us to challenge, how are we for you to take up with them? As far as we're concerned, we've been told by the government that this does not meet the requirements for the shop to be open. And so that is what we're here to advise you. And did they have sort of a, a notice or permission to do that, or did they just no, take no. it upon themselves? Yeah, hmm. yeah, so, right. um, okay. yeah, so that was the, the first day. So we kind of, um, we just went along with it that day because it was quite... Um, it was quite dramatic, wasn't it, the way you yeah, yeah, people in? And it was. Um, Quite um, yeah. intimidatory, if yeah. you could use that word. Right, so, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so we um, went away and thought about it and decided to reopen mm. um, as an essential shop, um, which we, we kind of felt we were essential before anyway. And the main but, um, reason for that was because we saw that this lockdown wasn't like the previous one. Other shops were open who mm. had been closed mm. before. Like and w similar w shops for us. Smith w Smith, Smith, yeah. Yeah. Which mm. effectively is doing the exact same thing as you do. Except they sell newspapers. You're a small business trying to stay open and a big chain like WH Smith can get away with the exact same thing. Um, do you think that's anything to do with the fact that you're a small business and therefore an easy target? Yeah, I think so. They're allowed to be open. Mm. The post office sells loads yeah. of cards as well. So, right. Um, and of course, I've got to mention the garden centres because they... I mean, you go to a garden centre for a trip, for a jolly. You don't go up to a garden mm. centre for essential, essential stuff. Shopping. They're usually more expensive anyway. People mm. go there for a yeah. trip. Yeah. And they're allowed to stay open. They're selling all the same kind of things as we get gifts and cards and, um, yeah, clothes and everything. Mm. All those kind of shops have to close, but, but they've been allowed to stay open. When lockdown came along, they looked at the regulations. They realised that they needed to be essential in order to stay open. So they started selling cakes and drinks and you know uh, chocolate bars and that sort of thing although they had already been selling that sort of thing before but they, they increased the amount so that they could stay open and yet they still got they still got persecuted by the police who came in and told them they needed to shut down so we um started selling a, just a bit more of, of uh, sort of confectionery and drinks and that kind of thing mm. but we do have a significant sugar craft section which we've sold for 30 years now so marzipan icing right. edible um things and um, so we felt like even on the basis of that, we could be considered essential. Uh, and then the council, um, the Department of Health, um, sent someone along to um, serve as a prohibition notice to mm. close with immediate effect. That was when we had reopened again as an essential shop. Um, but um, the council lady didn't come any further in the shop than, than more or less uh, just a few steps in from the doorway. She right. didn't even give us the decency of a, a, a proper inspection of what we have. Or anything, she just she yeah. was just determined to close us down. The police weren't interested in any discussion no. whatsoever. Right, they so they were just, just enforcing they were just it. Here totally, to do a job. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. So no common sense policing whatsoever. Just no. sort of no. imposing an edict on you. Was yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah.
they had their job to do, and that's all they were here to do. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, I mean, we'd all, we'd reached the stage that by then um, we weren't going to close, so mm. they, they just uh, walked out then. When I first came in, you hadn't been fined, but immediately after I left, you were then issued a fine that an hour later. The two um, officers who came previously came in the day before and they said, are you prepared to close? And uh, I said, well, no. So the next day, a couple of officers yeah. came and issued the fine. So they're sort of accelerating and they're putting the pressure on to try and force you to close. Yeah. Mm. And you still haven't received the fine in the post. Mm, no, so not they, yet. They've told you you're getting a fine, but you haven't got it yet. Yeah. 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 And am I correct? Yeah. They said they're going to issue you a £1,000 fine for every day you stay open that you shouldn't. Yes, yeah, so we were finding it difficult to hear what she was saying, weren't we? But it, it sounded like a thousand pounds a day mm. until mm. lockdown finished. Well, that's yeah. certainly happened in other parts of the country. There's a salon, um, I think, up north, which is mm. currently at twenty-seven thousand pounds in fines right. really? for staying open really? every single day. So, yeah. right. well, maybe they will. Yeah, but right. they haven't um, but you're said not, that. But you're not giving in, nonetheless. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Do you think that for them it's sort of almost like a grudge because they've come and told you to? shut down despite the fact that you've sort of changed and you've adapted as a business and you're staying open you're doing your best to survive and all the rest of it do you think for them it's almost personal I don't think it's personal I think they have a job to do and they mm. have to follow through because they've got to be seen to be yeah. doing the right thing whether that's well, right or wrong they have to abide by their regulations of course they? but likewise you've got a job to do as well yeah, exactly yeah. So. yeah that's why we're staying open yeah, that's because, all you're asking for um, yeah because the government weren't uh, offering us enough even to pay the rent wow. this time so it's very different from the last time. The government bribed businesses enough to stay at home. Mm. We were closed for 12 weeks and they, they bribed us enough with enough money to stay at home. This time mm. it's different. So um, sort of relying on the fact that because they did it the first time round, people would just possibly, take this one lying yeah, down. Possibly, mm. yeah. They sort of set the precedent and they just hope that people won't yeah. question it now. Yeah. But this lockdown is also different to the previous lockdown. There are more retailers open. Yeah. Um, more people around. More people around. Yeah. You know, I think people, people have taken it seriously. Well, oh, also, it seriously. a lot of yeah. businesses, a lot of people have adapted. They've realised this is how we can stay open. This is how yeah. we can yeah. continue to trade. Mm. And this is no detriment. You know, it's perfectly in line with the government regulations. Yeah. But the council still and the police still take it upon themselves to yeah. to come down hard on you. Mm. It's, it's different this time of year as well, because Alistair had just stopped the shop out with a lot of um, a thousand of pounds worth of Christmas stock. Right, you know, okay. So it's very different from back in the summer. This is, you know, our kind of shop. This mm. is the time when you've got to make that bit mu that bit more to, yeah, to survive yeah. the quiet months ahead. So, yeah. you know, so we've, we, we had that much stuff in the shop that we needed to sell and then bang, you know, we're told to close. So if you if you didn't have the support of Rebel, you know, obviously that'd be a huge amount of money you'd have to spend on legal fees just to fight this fine. Yeah. So do you think a lot of people might just take it lying down and think I'll pay out the thousand rather than actually getting legal representation? Definitely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, yes. um, it, I mean, it just makes such a difference knowing that, you know, mm. um, someone like Rebel News is behind us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just it's the difference between sleeping at night and not sleeping. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's massive. And yeah. none of this could be done without the support of our, our viewers and our people who donate and, and help you out. So totally. people across the yeah. world are behind you and uh, yeah, giving all they amazing. can to try and support yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. I'm talking to Daniel Burke, who's the uh, lawyer who's handling this case, the Grace Cards and Books case. Um, so could you just give me a summary on the case from, from a legal perspective? It's... Um... An unfortunate case, I suppose, in, in, in many respects. This is uh, a husband and wife who have run their shop for many, many years. Uh, primarily, it's, um, as the name suggests, it's a, a card shop. Uh, they sell wrapping paper, greeting cards, etc. The position of the council isn't entirely clear. It seems to be that, uh, uh, from further communications with them, that the council accepts that there were um, uh, you know, con confectionery type items, etc., being sold there, um, but they they don't they don't feel it was enough. And of course, that there are other far larger brands um, who have continued to trade uh, and have set up uh, modest concessions uh, given their size, uh, selling essential items, and haven't had any uh, difficulties with council intervention, as as far as I'm aware. Uh, but Grace Cards have, and they've been served with a prohibition notice. Grace Cards and Books have adapted to start selling things that are deemed to be essential in order to um, stay open. 
However, one of the problems is that they are continuing to sell things that are deemed to be non-essential. And because that was previously sort of majority of what they sold, they're being targeted. However, other big chains like WH Smith and B&M also sell the same sort of items, but because they've also been selling confectionery and sweets and all the rest of it and they're news agents, um, they, they get away with this sort of as a loophole. I mean, it's, it's an interesting point. And I go back to dreadfully drafted uh, um, law and guidance. Uh, a, a problem is what is essential uh, and what's non-essential. Uh, and, and as you say, there are far larger stores which are open. Um, B&M is one you mentioned. Uh, again, I don't know what dealings or not they've had with the council, but they certainly appear to be open and selling again the same sorts of items and many more but do seem to have small uh, uh, food and drink areas um, and at a cursory glance it, it doesn't appear to be a significant part of their turnover. Hopefully this can be resolved through communication um, but if not this will be obviously be a case for the courts and given this is an unprecedented case uh, and the, the law around it is so strangely drafted without much in the way of legal recourse in terms of appeals or usual due process, this will be a very interesting case. If you would like to support this couple as they fight this fine, you can chip in at fightthefines.co.uk. And if you find yourself in a similar situation to this couple, go to the same URL and fill in one of our forms, giving us your details, and we will fight for you. These people are not taking it lying down. They've been very brave. They've suffered the fines very well, very nobly, and we're here to support them. We need your support. We need your donations in order to be able to do that. Thank you for all of you out there who are supporting fightthefines.co.uk and Rebel News. Without your support, without your views, without your donations, we couldn't do what we do. We are out here helping these small businesses, these family-run businesses as much as we possibly can, but it starts with you.